Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope I'm audible. Romana, I'm audible. You are audible. Audible. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, with the permission of uh, the editor in chief of Micro India Journal of uh, Indian Fungi, Professor Sridhar, I would like to uh, start this proceeding. Professor Sridhar? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just uh, start, uh, start with the introductory remarks. So, I mean, about Micro India Journal of Indian Fungi and today's event, uh, Micro India. Uh, you know, uh, World Fungus Day 2023 lecture series. Uh, before, uh, let me start with my Quinde Journal of Indian Panja. We started this journal a couple of months back with the vision uh, to be a, one of the leading mycology journals uh, of the world uh, on Indian fungi from India. So we have got a, a fantastic editorial board. Many of the editorial board members are present here. I welcome them. I welcome all the all the welcome all the participants today. I hope we will have a very insightful uh, talks, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, uh, we'll become richer in knowledge by uh, at the end of this uh, on the day. Actually, uh, about Professor Sridhar. Professor Sridhar was the uh, was my MSc teacher. Now he's the he has graciously accepted to be uh, to be the editor in chief of my India Journal of Indian Fungi. Uh, he will be giving the first lecture. There will be twelve like, uh, talks uh, in the in this uh, lecture series. Uh, Professor Shridhar will be giving the first talk on uh, on, on my aquatic fungi. Uh, the title of the talk would be, uh, is uh, you know, glimpses of, on uh, aquatic fungi. I request uh, Dr. Gunjan Sharma to introduce the uh, speaker and the editor in chief of uh, my to the to this audience. Dr. Gunjan, please. Yeah, good morning, everybody. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. So, Professor Kandikere Ramaya Sridhar, he is an adjunct professor in the Department of Biosciences at Bangalore University. His main area of research is diversity and ecology of freshwater fungi of the Western Ghats, fungi in mangrove and marine habitats of the west coast of India. He has several national and international collaborations and awards including Mycological Society of India, Asian Mycological Society, and Association of Agricultural Technology of Southeast Asia. He has guided 25 PhD students and has edited 14 books in CRC Press, Apple Academic Press, Springer Nature, and Fungal Diversity Press. And he has also published over 500 research papers in national and international journals. Over to you, Professor Sridhar. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you can start, please. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sharma, for introduction. And I am uh, I have uh, given the title "Glimpses of Aquatic Fungi." <clears throat> Mainly, I discuss about uh, the freshwater high fungi seeds. And uh, freshwater fungi are a uh, very important uh, group. Uh, and uh, many of these fungi uh, complete their life cycle under the uh, underwater. Their aquatic conditions and their life cycle. And uh, many of them are lignocytic material will be decomposed by such organisms. The kingdom fungi, uh, everybody is aware that they are independent line uh, along with plants and animals, and uh, they have no chloro and they have no human like uh, animals. And uh, there are two important groups micro and macro fungi, and they occupied a wide range of habitats. Um, and uh, they, although many of these fungi are pathogenic, they meet the human needs, especially decomposition of organic matter is one of the prime importance. And uh, food, uh, food and food processing uh, aspects they involve. Uh, and pharmaceuticals we obtain from them, biofuels we obtain from them, biopesticides and bioprotectants, and industrially valued uh, materials 
or uh, compounds can be obtained from these organisms and useful in many respects. Uh, the one of the questions is uh, how, why this? Uh, what is the difference between terrestrial and aquatic microbiome? So if you look into the history of uh, terrestrial mycology, it is uh, more than 100 years. But aquatic mycology is quite recent, and uh, more, much of the information is still a dark matter. And one of the investigations, that is the C13 enrichment based on phospholipid-derived uh, fatty acids, fungi are tenfold higher than bacteria. And secondly, uh, C14 acetate, especially fungal ergosterol, and uh, thymidine, um, that is uh, bacterial DNA, comparison also indicates that fungal production is more than bacteria. And for, to give a, a statistics about the fungal annual production will be approximately 16 to 193 grams per square meter. So therefore, it all depends upon the availability of organic matter. So therefore, aquatic mycology is still uh, not uh, very well explored. And uh, what are the lifestyle of uh, aquatic fungi? They exist in terrestrial condition too, maybe in the form of uh, perfect state. And aquatic, they are as usual. And they also grow under anaerobic situation. As long as the mycelia is continuous, it will uh, extract the oxygen from the atmosphere and uh, decompose some of the organic matter present in the anaerobic zones. And they are halophilic. Many of them are halophilic. And uh, they are temperature tolerating organisms, and they are also barophilic, and uh, they also mutualistic with plants and animals as endophytes. And many animals are the fungi, and uh, many of these micro and macro algae also have symbiotic or mutualistic association with aquatic fungi, and some of them are mycoparasitic. Uh, these are the lifestyle. Uh, how much is the global freshwater and saline water? This is always uh, uh, very interesting because we have only approximately 3% of freshwater and 97% of uh, saline water. And uh, again, uh, about 3% freshwater, 1.75 to 2% is glaciers, and it is uh, locked in ice and snow, and uh, 0.5 to 0.75% is groundwater and soil moisture is that amount. And uh, the amount, amount of fresh water available for human being or uh, uh, the biodiversity is surface water in lakes, rivers, and swamps. It is less than 0.01%. So therefore, the fungi the, they are existing in such type of water waters are very useful and important for uh, life to continue. But you can imagine how much of uh, diversity is there five percent water what we have in the globe uh, freshwater fungi are also referred as ingoldian fungi uh, because in 1942 was authentically proved that there are specific group of fungi they they uh, evolved life has evolved in water and uh, they uh, transmitted to terrestrial condition and ingoldian fungi they migrated to aquatic situation by several adaptations. The major ecological services, what they provide to us is the plant data decomposition. So today we are talking about how to degrade the waste material. Um, that is uh, the environment friendly decomposition and transformation of waste material and also uh, to produce some of the energy and the various other products from that. Uh, secondly, they also are responsible for energy flow in the detritus uh, ecosystem. And uh, uh, the, 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 although the photosynthesis, uh, that is primary producers and producers, have been extensively studied, the detritus food chain has been least studied. So therefore, this group of fungi are very important. So the species richness of aquatic hyphomycetes is highest in the mid-latitudes. So that is temperate streams. The reason for that is in tropical region, studies on aquatic hyphomycetes is less. Uh, probably in the future uh, decades, it may, may be shifting towards a tropical rather than temperate streams. Community similarity is between geographically distant locations with similar climatic zones show uh, 
specific group of aquatic hypomycetes. And according to Ingold, if you if you evaluate a particular group of uh, uh, that is uh, aquatic hypomycetes from a particular location, you can you if you uh, list out all these uh, aquatic hypomycetes indirectly, you can say the its latitude and longitude can guessed by based on that. That's how uh, that is they are very specific for certain climatic zones. And uh, the uh, approximate uh, number of species is based on morphologies have been uh, evaluated so far is approximately 335 species. Probably a few species have been added uh, recently. It, it is not exceeding more than 350 species. Therefore, it is very handy to evaluate also to follow their uh, ecosystem services in the aquatic body. So the aquatic hypothesis are, as I mentioned, it is a neglected mycota, although they are a major group of fungi in lotic waters. And they are key fungi in aquatic food webs because, because a lot of invertebrates and even vertebrates are depending upon the detritus material. There is competition between aquatic fungi, aquatic hypomycetes, as well as invertebrates to eat this organic material, especially the leaves that is transmitted, transported into the aquatic body, uh, the, the streams. And uh, uh, many occasions, uh, uh, the invertebrates wait till the aquatic fungi colonize the leaf material. By that, they will get more benefit rather than eating the raw uh, leaf litter. So the streams uh, are the you know, common locations. And outside the streams, also, they are existing. And the, the major function is decomposition and energy flow, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, there are a lot of diverse substrates on which it is going to colonize. Not only leaf material, they can colonize woody material. They can colonize as endophytes, root material. They can colonize the uh, submerged uh, microphytes. And they also colonize uh, some of the other uh, organic material that is available. in. So they may exist in the uh, sediments and such things. So these are referred as model fungi to test the detritus food chain. Because this is very easy to study. And also, uh, it is possible to evaluate various parameters uh, and uh, it is possible to use them as model fungi because we are dealing with a sort of community ecosystem or community, not single organism. So entire organisms we are we can evaluate. Therefore, it is very interesting one. And it is possible to assess the water quality and uh, uh, it is possible to understand the impact of pollution using uh, freshwater hypomycetes. And major studies in India uh, of course, it is a neglected mycota even in India, but Western Ghats are the region where people have evaluated. Uh, my, my group and uh, Professor Kaverepa and uh, uh, group and even Professor DJ Bhatt and his group uh, from uh, uh, Goa and uh, other people also evaluated. And another important uh, major work has been carried out in Central Himalayas by Suresh Sati and his group. And uh, approximately 20, 20 new species of aquatic hypomycetes have been reported so far from Indian subcontinent. And this is the map showing the distribution of aquatic hypomycetes globally. Uh, all, almost all the continents are covered. Um, probably maybe Arctic may not be much, but um, some of the uh, hits are also, you can see uh, locations, different locations where uh, the, it has been studied, and uh, recently the Brazil, a lot of work is going on in Brazil pertaining to aquatic hypomycetes, and uh, major work has been carried out in USA and also uh, European region, and India also you can see very few points where some work has been carried out. So the one of the interesting uh, aspects we can we can see here is is aquatic hypomycetes have three different type of uh, morphology. Number one is conventional, conventional type, like spherical or oval or whatever. Maybe you can see the first slide, it is the Heliscus lagdunensis, is like that. And the second group is sphericoid. So either it is curved or sigmoid type of India. Yeah. Second, third, and fourth. So the Lunulospora curvula, Lunulospora sindiformis, and uh, Angulospora clutch type of species. Then either the multicellular, multi-radiate, three, three arms, four arms, like that. And sometimes you can see 
um, some of them have 20, 21 arms, more than 21 arms like that. And uh, see, these are all multi. And sometimes it may produce main arm, secondary arm, tertiary arm, such type of things also we can see. So this is the scolacoid spores, two points. So here it is something like a wire. When you twist the wire and put it on the table, uh, two points are going to touch the, uh, the table. That is one is the tip of the wire. Secondly, the, the, the base of the wire. So two points are going to touch the table. That means the, on the leaf material, these uh, points are the one where it is going to germinate and colonize the leaf material. So that is how the sigmoid or scolacoid spores are going to function. So you can also see a Z-shaped type of uh, spores. Uh, sometimes it is not believable that such type of morphology, morphological uh, diversity is there under aquatic hyphomycetes. Second group is toroid. As I mentioned, either triradiate, tetraradiate, multiradiate type of uh, uh, spores with uh, varieties of uh, uh, morphologically different species. So in this case, what happens when it lodges on the surface of a uh, leaf, it, three points are going to touch the leaf surface. When three points are going to touch the leaf surface, immediately it starts producing a prosorium and produce the mycelia and then catch the organic matter. So that is the adaptability. Uh, that is uh, adaptability to aquatic uh, system and also because of producing a prosorium and uh, they uh, they cannot uh, be dislodged so easily because of uh, mucilage that is present uh, along with the aprosorium. And third group is helicosporus. These are about as aero aquatic plants. They, they, they are also partially related to aquatic uh, group, but they, they have spores with a twist. And uh, interestingly, they trap air bubble in the, for the purpose of floating. So the sigmoid ones also float much more than conventional spores. And the multiradiate spores also float. It is they live, they uh, survive a planktonic life in water. And the third group is they are going to trap the air bubble and they float in water. Uh, some of them, you know, below, I think uh, uh, K, L, and J are they are not uh, uh, the helicopter. Uh, they are uh, triradiate or tetraradiate and see you, you you can have a general idea about how much of uh, uh, spores will be produced or conidia will be produced by leaf material approximately nelson 1964 indicated that 300000 conidia will be produced per leaf and subsequently barrowker in 92 has fine tuned that it they can produce up to 1 million uh, spores per leaf, a moderate size leaf. It is equivalent to eight spores or eight conidia per microgram leaf. That is that is its capacity. And uh, Webster 1981 mentioned that up to 30,000 conidia can be filtered use per liter of water from the streams. Like so, therefore, so conidial enumeration is to help us to understand the community structure of a floating ecosystem system and also conidial enumeration and also ATP, they are going to match together. Even ATP estimation and conidial enumeration or counting will be matching. Similarly, the ergosterol content also can be estimated because this ergosterol are specific for fungi, filamentous fungi, like uh, cholesterol in human beings and uh, stigma sterol in plants. 5.5 milligram ergosterol is equivalent to one gram fungal biomass. So therefore, it is a signature sterol, and it can be used as one of the authentic indicators or how much of uh, this fungi is there in the in the leaf material. And also, you can compare with the bacteria how much of bacteria is there like that. So that's how they estimated that the fungi are more than uh, because fungi fungi are uh, not surface dependent. They are surface dependent. So, what are the ecological niches? They colonize on submerged uh, detritus, and uh, uh, they also uh, flowing water, hyphoreas, especially sediments and biofilms, foam and scum. They are going to congregate, congregate, and sediments, uh, CPOM, that is coarse particulate matter and fine particulate matter, they convert into dissolved organic matter, live plant tissues. Riparian roots and hydrophytes, 
partially submerged plant detritus stream borders temporary aquatic bodies adjacent to terrestrial habitats animal intestine especially invertebrate intestine and even fish intestine we found aquatic hypomycetes live from the feces can be cultured salt influenced habitats like estuaries mangroves and canopy of trees where heavy rains are available uh, heavy rain situation so this is a very simple diagram showing this uh, when uh, the coarse particulate matter converted into fine particulate matter dissolved organic matter and uh, the another group zooplankton and uh, such organisms will eat them and again it is having benthic tent where benthic fauna also will be benefited and fishes will be the ultimate consumers uh, that is product productivity in the aquatic ecosystem so ecological services as i mentioned decomposition is very important conversion of coarse and fine particulate matter to dissolved organic matter it will be utilized in the aquatic 63 to 100% of fungal biomass exists in detritus so that is i have already mentioned that fungal fungal production uh, will be more than bacterial production and fungal biomass will be approximately 18% of the total detritus mass and uh, out, out of 18% 80% of fungal biomass allocated for spore production another 20 will not be uh, used for spore production because uh, they may produce perfect state using that for example if uh, uh, wood material is colonized 80% will be converted into spores but rest will be for the purpose of perfect state production or the uh, the uh the ascomycetes stage or basidiomyces stage production it will be utilized food web so that is palatability will be increased because of colonization on the leaf material and insect metamorphosis is very important where since ergosterol is there insects are dependent on this material fungal material in the aquatic body especially in the leaf material because they need uh, ergosterol for metamorphosis so many insects are going to lay the eggs Uh, under water and uh, they metamorphose and then fly away and they become arboreal and again they come back to aquatic ecosystem to live like that so their metamorphosis mainly depending upon fatty acids uh, present in uh, aquatic hypomycetes and as usual they are important in energy flow and this is giving you an idea about horizontal diversity that is coarse particulate matter to fine particulate matter and carbon dioxide production and leaf litter will be utilized by both uh, Uh, aquatic hypomycetes and also invertebrates both of them produce uh, fine particulate matter dissolved organic matter and carbon dioxide like that and the predators are the one they are depending upon uh, this uh, invertebrates and also the detritus material so you can see a sort of uh, horizontal and vertical diversity with regard to these organisms so this is a small uh, 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 that is uh, the plants and animals convert uh, linoleic acid into arachidonic acid that is uh, the uh, omega 6 fatty acids this omega 6 fatty acids will be taken up by fungi algae plants uh, they convert omega 6 fatty acid to omega 3 fatty acids that is alpha linoleic acid eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid so uh, you you know very well about the importance of omega 6 and omega 3 fatty acids so the both fungi and algae are important to produce omega 3 fatty acids and that is very important in nutrition and uh, if you look into the studies in the western ghats uh, about 100 species have been reported in 55 genera approximately 30% of the global report is available from indian and uh, that is especially from the western ghats richness increases with high altitude and mid altitude so the mid altitude is very good for collection or uh, the number of species so richness decreases uh, mid altitude to coastal region uh, we have reported nearly 50 lignicola species that is ascomycetes type of fungi uh, that lignicola species from 30 genera mainly as ascomycetes and aquatic fungi have also been reported mid altitude streams i mentioned here it compage stream is about 500 meters uh, above sea level and it is one of the hot spots of the diversity of aquatic hypomycetes and uh, uh, canopy uh, stem through fall and tree holes uh, these are all the ecosystems where they colonize and many seasons like uh, monsoon season 
and uh, post monsoon season summer uh, that is seasonal studies can be conducted and the temperature ph and conductivity is also important and the dead substrate like leaf bark wood root litter um, live parts of uh, hydrophytes and roots and the variety of methods can be used for filtration and direct observation i will discuss uh, later aquatic hyphomycetes in sampaja stream uh, by single sampling we get 90 species it is going to cover nearly 27 species of the global occurrence so that shows that mid altitude streams are very very important and they are the hot spots of diversity of aquatic hyphomycetes so recently we developed a latex trapping technique within 24 hours latex banyan latex traps nearly 50 species of aquatic animals in one day 50 species can be evaluated uh, mid altitude himalayas where himachal pradesh nainital is one of the regions where dr suresh sati and his group has evaluated and aquatic hive mycetes and enormous result have been brought out especially on the diversity and ecology of aquatic hive mycetes in addition to diversity taxonomy role of aquatic hive mycetes they also projected the importance of aquatic hive mycetes in plant product protection plant growth promotion and also phosphate solubilization especially many of the endophytic fungi are useful and they can be adapted to the terrestrial crops as uh, endophytes and uh, it has some agricultural importance because their plant protection is possible and growth promotion is possible and also phosphate solubilization is possible this fungi so we have nearly 27 ramsar sites in india and uh, i don't think there will be any major reports and like that but it is not that only aquatic hyphomycete other type of fungi also exists in ramsar location and uh, this is one of the areas where people can concentrate uh, so the, there are two important things, structure and function. Uh, biodiversity in ecosystem can be evaluated. And it is a community. You are going to deal with a community. Leaf filter decomposition is a very simple and authentic cost-effective method. No money, much money is involved. And guidelines to control human impact. And uh, they are indicator species, either pollutant, pollutant sensitive and pollutant, pollutant resistant species, and also molecular uh, Pyro sequencing can also be used and the blend of methods can be evaluated. So the pollution is very common and uh, aquatic, aquatic, uh, aquatic habitats will also be polluted in various ways because of global warming, pH, conductivity, domestic and urban sewage, industrial activity and exotic plants, uh, especially riparian vegetation and uh, that is the exotic plants uh, cultivation, destruction of riparian veget vegetation channeling, these are all xenobiotics are the possible approaches is it is a community ecology. Therefore, you are not dealing with one simple one fungus, several organisms you are going to discuss. Therefore, it is more authentic. Secondly, decomposition, stable to fragile, quantitative studies, induction of perfect state, and also you can work on canopy, uh, tree holes, true fall, stem flow, and aeroaquatic habitats can be evaluated, root endophytes can be evaluated, stress tolerance, especially bioremediation, where uh, uh, Suresh Sati has uh, introduced a lot of information about that, a mode of transmission from habitat to habitat. So the methods, direct methods can be used, conidia by filtering, mycelial mass, epifluorescence microscopy, latex trapping, and indirect method, partial plating. Uh, Professor Bart also evaluated using partial plating, foam induction, ergosirol, and chitin, mass loss is an index that is half life for the 50 percent how much time takes for 50 percent decomposition of the organic material will give us an idea that whether it is fish time or polluted or perturbed like that uh, transplant experiments you know you can you can uh, transplant the material it is decomposing in the pristine environment to a polluted environment and vice versa therefore you will understand what is the extent of perturbation took place in a particular Lotic environment. So the, there are simple methods that reveal complicated truth on fungal biodiversity, especially with regard to. So you with, with sitting in a high school or pre-university, you can do this job. Water filtration can be can be done. Water filter, you need some millipore filters and uh, micro, uh, filters of uh, five micron or five micron. Foam analysis can be done using a simple microscope. Leaf litter incubation in bubble chamber. 
uh, you can uh, use the cassette pipette and uh, bubble it for 24 hours or 48 hours and filter it and see the spores. And leaf baiting technique can be used. Introduce a sterile leaf into a particular region and then collect it and observe it. That is recent colonization. Or latex and rosin coated slides also can be uh, used. So this therefore it becomes a model mycota. Meso, micro, mesocosms and microcosm experiment, especially field and laboratory studies. So the interesting point is impaction is fungal colonization on the substrate. Second is colonization and followed by growth. Third stage is sporulation. Fourth stage is spore dispersal. Fifth stage is again spore, the spore germination. Like that, it is a cyclic event. All of this can be used as variables in order to understand the importance of this community. So the conservation strategies, there are many, triplet species, four group species, keystone species, quantitative data, in situ colonization, in situ conserva conservation, ex situ conservation, repositories, identification of hotspots of fungi, uh, new and novel strategies, habitat loss, loss of keystone, species, keystone trees by inv invasive fungi, any other outliers other than Sampaje, probably in, in Himalaya also we may find mid altitude may be uh, an outlier, and rehabilitation task. Uh, I mean, the, what are the gaps? Wood and sediment, not much explored. Overlapping habitats are many, aquatic, terrestrial, lentic, estuarine, mangrove, and marine. Most productive out outliers, mid altitude and mid latitudes. Several unidentified. If you take one study, nearly if you 10 to 20% of the species cannot be identified. That means the diversity is there in every in different regions what we um, search cryptic species symbionts core group and also perfect and imperfect connections so one of the interesting features is nowadays in freshwater we can see some of the lichens freshwater lichens are there they are growing under the submerged condition or aeroquatic condition and what is the role of aquatic hyphomycetes to utilize this resource or what is the role of ascomycetes utilizing this resource because uh, the the whatever is lichens there it will die and it will be decomposed decomposition for that aquatic hyphomycetes and ascomycetes are necessary and this is one of the new niche for, to evaluate so there are several tasks ahead stream catchments stream channeling removal of obstacles is always dangerous because wherever there is major obstacles there the life will be more diversity will be more riparian vegetation detritus input impact of exotic plants all this and uh, preservation uh, identification and preservation of uh, hot spots that is the uh, in, in situ uh, ex situ uh, or in situ uh, con conservation habitat loss and rehabilitation all such things are important uh, i am thankful to mangalore university to sustain me for a long time more than 45 years and the organizers of my india to invite me to talk on this issue and also audience and my students worked on and work and working on uh, freshwater fungi if you have any questions you better put it in the chat box i will answer you thank you uh, thank you so much sir for a lovely presentation there are indeed a lot of questions in the chat box so i'll start reading them out and if somebody wants to ask a question uh, themselves they can raise their hands uh, but then let me do it, please. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, Akshaya, do it, or oh, please ask your question. Sir, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, hello. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you are audible. Yes. Uh, hi, sir. Hi, sir. Myself, Akshaya, uh, from Kerala. I am doing PhD uh, yeah. on fungal diversity yeah, yeah. in Agustimala Biosphere Reserve, Kerala, Chudandra. Okay. Sir, in your presentation, you have mentioned one point that in an uh, in an aquatic ecosystem, mm. aquatic fungi helps in plant protection. So I uh, interested to know mm. more about that. How they helps in plant protection? Yeah. Uh, can you send me an email to kandikere um, uh, gmail dot com? I will send you some research papers. And plant protection ah, sure, published, do later. published by Suresh Sati recently. A few papers published ah, by okay, Suresh Sati from Nainital. 
I will send you the papers recently appeared in some of the journals. I think it is in uh, Asian Journal of Mycology and uh, uh, Studies in Fungi, something like that. But please, please send me, uh, give me your email, I will send the literature. Ah, sure, sir. I will do. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your kind presentation. Thank you. Rajesh, uh, please ask your question. I, I want to know uh, why some fungi are ab able to survive in SB manitol agar. Are they capable of uh, nitrogen fixation? And if they are uh, capable of nitrogen fixation, how they uh, do it? Uh, is there any special enzyme complex to do that or they harbor uh, symbiotic bacteria? Uh, I have no uh, correct answer for this question. But uh, the aquatic alphamycetes, if you start growing on the media, nutrient agar medium, 1.5% or 2%, the growth will be very, very slow. It is not fast growing organism. And uh, uh, I don't have any idea about uh, the relationship between aquatic alphamycetes and bacteria with regard to uh, nitrogen. Of course, this fungi will never fix atmospheric nitrogen, especially yeah. There may be some. Thank you. I. Thank in, uh, you. Arbuscular uh, hello. Uh, there are health associated with the arbuscular. Don't have any idea about this. Aquatic uh, It's association with the bacteria. Okay, Miss Veena, yes. If you are decay, degrading fungal diversity, definitely uh, Abhaya Diani has, uh, has asked this question, and it is possible to use the metagenic approach. Uh, depending on the availability of uh, uh, facilities, it is possible to use it. So the pyrosequencing, the, the number of organisms, uh, morph it is around 300, 335. But if you go for a pyro sequencing, number of species you can evaluate using that. So the number is doubled because of specificity or the precise uh, uh, that you are using, metagenomic approaches. Morphological study, both of them will be useful in evaluation. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, we must stop the question and answer session now. Thank you so much. Uh, if uh, I mean we have more questions, please uh, let us discuss in our uh, Micro India WhatsApp group. Let us uh, discuss thank you. Uh, those questions in the WhatsApp yeah. group. Or let them send me to kandikaremanasa.gmail.com. I will reply them. Or I yes, will we have already shared. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We have thank already shared much. his email address in the chat box. Yeah. And I would okay. like to thank our editor in chief, Professor Sridhar, for giving the wonderful presentation on aquatic fungi. And uh, we, we uh, thanks for uh, inspiring us, you know, to better in science. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh,